Good morning. Welcome to Harmony of the Gospel. This is lesson number 33. So we're continuing the discourse between Nicodemus and Jesus. Okay, we're continuing the discourse. All right. And so um, uh, the, the overall topic of, of this message here is look to Jesus and Jesus only. Okay, look to Jesus and Jesus only. Now, so we're, we're going to uh, get into this lesson. This lesson covers some beautiful passages of scriptures to include John 3.16. It's wonderful that, um, that this lesson would come up today as lesson number 33 um, on Christmas Eve, um, right before Christmas Day. And we celebrate Jesus' birthday tomorrow. And so this is a wonderful thing, Jesus coming to the earth. And, and so I, it's just a beautiful thing that, that we would uh, be able to teach this message at this time frame. So thank you very much for listening today. And let's say a quick word of prayer, and then we'll get into the message. Dear Jesus, we thank Thee for this day, and we thank Thee for the chance again to teach Your Word. Lord, I ask You just please open the ears and minds of the people out there who may hear and understand Your Word here today. Oh, Lord Jesus, please use this um, for your glory and for the advancement of your gospel. In your name, Jesus, amen. All right, let's read uh, John chapter 3, uh, verses 11 through 16. John chapter 3, verses 11 through 16. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Man, what, what a pleasure to read those words there. Man, I'll tell you, the, the wonderful gift of God to send his Son to the earth to die for our sins so that we might have everlasting life. Wow, such a beautiful thing. So we're going to be covering a lot of verses today. They're very well known, very well known. Every Christian should know these verses. I'm sure a lot of the lost know these verses, all right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Such beautiful words. Yes, Jesus loves you. He loves me. He loves all of us. And he loves all the world, okay? So where any person that believes might be saved, okay? That any person that believes this drawn, okay? And they come to the foot of the cross and they do not reject, but they believe, yes, they are saved. The Holy Spirit then begins a work in you. He, he changes you and he quickens your spirit so that your spirit is no longer dead in its trespasses and sins. Adam sinned and brought the human race into condemnation so that we're all born into sin. Abraham was chosen so that God could make a great nation of Abraham, and that in Abraham's seat, <coughs> we would have the Israelite nation, the promise, and the blessings that would go out to all nations. God gave the law to the Israelites, okay? The Israelites were to follow and uphold the law, but they could not. So God disciplined his chosen people, and cast them off, okay? And no one was able to follow the law of any person on the earth, okay? All people failed, so mankind then had no hope. So someone must pay the price for sin. Someone, and that person's name was Jesus Christ, okay? The problem with mankind is that we are all too blind, absolutely too blind, we are all too self-deceived, okay, to be able to see our desperate need for a Savior. And we must hear the gospel. The gospel must ring in our ears, okay, for us to understand our desperate situation. Within 
this discourse here, we find the same issue in Nicodemus. We see this very same thing, that he was too blind and too self-deceived. Nicodemus was a learned teacher and leader, and he could not grasp at all what Jesus was telling him here. Matthew Henry states that Nicodemus was ignorant of Christ's meaning. So Nicodemus states, how can these things be? These things that Nicodemus could not understand, he could not understand in the capacity of his mind. He could not reach an understanding or comprehension of what Jesus had told him and supplied. So thus the scriptures are stated, the things of the Spirit of God are foolishness to the natural man. This is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Let me state this again. The things of the Spirit of God are foolishness to the natural man. And this we see clearly today throughout our society. Matthew Henry points out that Nicodemus was estranged from these truths that Christ had brought him, and therefore they were dark to him. They were hidden to him. And he was prejudiced against the truths where the truths were foolishness to him. And so he said, how can these things be? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. What I'm doing today, preaching and teaching, okay? All right, the foolishness of it, okay? All right, but God uses this so that others might hear the gospel and that they might believe. So these truths were hid from Nicodemus, and being a master in Israel, a teacher, Nicodemus could have searched out the doctrines of regeneration and the Holy Spirit, salvation, and of grace, the free gift of grace. But Nicodemus chose to listen to the teachers that brought him up. He chose to believe in the things he was taught. He chose to follow the line of belief of the Pharisees, because he was a Pharisee. He chose not to think and to comprehend and to say, well, maybe they might be wrong. He chose not to think. He chose not to make any waves in his profession. So Jesus' Jesus' response to him, art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? So Jesus asked that question to him. Verse 11. Verily, verily, when you, so, so when you see verily, verily, the words verily, verily, um, in the Bible, you need to take note of what is about to be said, okay? So Jesus here states verily, verily. So listen to what he has to say. Jesus says, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness, okay? Pretty fascinating set of statements here that Jesus makes. So Jesus could testify. He could preach. He could teach the scriptures because he was God and was the son of God, okay? Um, he was connected to the Father, and he was endued with the power of the Holy Spirit. It takes three witnesses, okay? All right, so, so he was endued with the power of the Holy Spirit. So his testimony was true, and it was pure, and it was right, okay? So he was, Jesus was a part of the Trinity, which is the Godhead, okay? Now, not only was Jesus testifying of himself, but he was also testifying of his disciples. The disciples were testifying about what they had seen and heard and learned through Jesus as well, okay? All right? So Jesus states, ye receive not our witness, okay? No one in there was receiving the witness of what Jesus was saying. Jesus' own personal witness and the witness of his, his disciples. So divine, he had a divine witness there and an earthly witness as well, okay? So he had divine and earthly testimonies on both sides. This is still so true of today, okay? Christians testify of Christ and people receive not our witness or our testimony, okay? They receive not the witness of Christ, okay? Each Christian that comes to know Christ has a testimony. 
I have a testimony, okay? And, and, and my life has drastically changed from what it was. So here I am doing this today, and I can tell you back before I got saved, I could, I would have swore there would be no time in my life that I'd ever be doing something like this, okay? But here I am doing this, all right? It's pretty fascinating, all right? So and, and any time a drunkard that's down in a gutter gets saved, and then the very next day he's, he's washed, he's shaven, he's changed his clothes, he's trying to, to get about his life, and, and it's a miracle each time, okay? But the world does not want to believe the testimony, okay? So Jesus states in this one verse the certainty and the absolute beauty of the gospel. The certainty and absolute beauty of the gospel. But few receive the witness of these truths. Many in this world show folly by making strange the truths of the Bible today and the truths of the gospel. They make strange the truths of the Bible and the gospel today in many so-called churches across this land. They no longer preach salvation and they no longer preach an end of hell, okay? That the lost will end in hell, okay? They no longer preach the need for salvation, for a repentance to come to the cross, okay? So they make folly of the Bible and the truths of the gospel. So, verse 12. Jesus highlights to Nicodemus, If I had told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Oh, another great question. So Jesus clearly points out a heavenly thing in verse 3. Okay, A heavenly thing in verse 3, where he states, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But Nicodemus did not listen or comprehend in verse 4. Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Okay, so clearly he didn't comprehend. So Jesus provides an earthly thing to Nicodemus in verses 5 through 8, where he says, I sit verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, and the spirit he can't enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee that you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit. Okay? So clearly Jesus points out earthly things. All right? Then in verse 9, Nicodemus once again cannot comprehend and Nicodemus states in verse 9, how can these things be? So Jesus clearly reproves him in verse 10, art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Okay? All right? So folks, the Bible clearly spells out the gospel truths. All right? The Bible clearly spells out the gospel truths. I believe in the old King James Version, and I will stick by it until the day I die. Okay? But mankind chooses to distort. He, mankind chooses to deceive himself. He wants to write his own scriptures and change the words that were originally put down. So you pick up any new uh, uh, so-called Bible today and you will find the changes, okay? And, and, and you go back to the King James and take a look. You're like, wow, this is a major change here. You will find in some of these new so-called Bibles they get rid of complete verses, complete sets of scriptures, okay? Um, and so that's the problem. They change the wording. They change the phrases. They change the understanding of the, of the scriptures, okay? All right, so I've got several of the new Bibles here in my house because of this one reason. I, as a Christian, need to know the changes if I'm going to talk about it, okay? All right? <clears throat> so, mankind chooses not to believe. He chooses to make his own set of scriptures, okay, which are not scriptures at all. So in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, and it states this, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Everything we look around at, it's clearly seen. We know it, okay? We know that it's of God. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we so that they are without excuse, okay? Clearly, clearly when you look around, you can tell that God exists, okay? 
the creation of God and the intricacies of all that was made, the life, the death, the burial, resurrection of Jesus, all that's there, the gospel, if people chose to search it out, they could. But people chose to believe a lie. They choose to believe a lie. They absolutely choose, okay? The Pharisees had chosen to believe a falsehood and a lie. They absolutely did. In Romans chapter 21 to 22, uh, Romans 1, chap, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 1, verses 21 to 22. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So, became vain in their imaginations. They make up all these things, the Big Bang Theory. They make up all these different things about, well, you know, man came from a sea monkey, you know, or man came from an amoeba, you know, and we just jumped out of the water and then had a tail and then started swinging a tree and then realized we wanted to walk on the ground and grew legs and started running around, you know. So they, they want to do that. And then and then we, we fall out of the tree and land by a tavern and get drunk and they're sloppy in the gutter, you know, and that's mankind. So, and that's the, the story they want to tell, all right. So now these verses were written, okay, um, in the book of Romans, here in the book of Romans, I think clearly by Paul. Um, so so I, and I, I love these verses that Paul put down. And within these verses, you can see the action of human nature, okay? So these verses were written by Paul to all mankind, okay? And, and you can, I, I've read these verses, actually, these, these verses I just read, I've read them to people in my office at one time. And one of the guys got really upset, and he said, and he said, he wrote on a board. He said, I wrote this on a board. These are the words of man, not God. So he got really upset with me because he was in sin, okay? All right, and, and these Bible, the, the Bible clearly laid and convicted his heart, but he rejected, all right? So, so within these verses, you can see the actions of human nature, the human nature that desires to reject God, even though God is clearly seen. All right, the Pharisees prided themselves on keeping the law. The Pharisees sought the praise of men, but inwardly they were full of dead man's bones, okay? The Pharisees had the word of God, but they misused it and forced more requirements that were made up onto others while breaking the law themselves inwardly, okay? And that's what they were doing. In Romans chapter 2, verse 28 through 29, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, so they were all circumcised, okay, which is outward in the flesh, okay? But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, okay, that actually believes and has faith. Circumcision is that of the heart, okay? It's when you circumcise, circumcise your heart of all sin, okay? All right is of the heart and in the spirit, not in the letter of the law, whose praise is not of men, but of God, okay? Because we praise God, all right? We don't seek the praise of men, okay? We seek to glorify God. So this is why Jesus tells Nicodemus, art thou a master in Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Okay, pretty clear. Jesus was telling Nicodemus the truths of the gospel, but from Nicodemus's point of view, his words were, how can these things be? So now Jesus, in verse 13, explains. He explains the doctrine which was for him alone, for Jesus alone to reveal. None but Christ and Christ alone can reveal salvation to the lost soul, whether Jew or Gentile, because salvation is a free gift, okay? It's called grace, okay? It's a free gift of God, where God gives you grace, all right? Verse 13, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven, so Jesus clearly explains to Nicodemus that no man can ascend up into heaven. But he, Jesus, the Son of Man, came down from heaven, which is in heaven. 
So even though Jesus was on earth as the Son of Man, he was fully connected to the Godhead with reference to his omnipresence. Jesus is the true witness. Jesus reveals who you really are. When you come to the cross, okay, and you're convicted, you see who you really are. The closer you get to Jesus, you desire a close walk with him. But every time when you get closer and closer, you begin to see just how filthy you are and you want to shed that filth. Okay, you do because you desire to be closer to him. All right, that's the beauty of it. Okay, all right, so. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20 states, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So today, okay, today, find a church. Find a good Bible-believing church and gather together with them in that church to worship, okay? I, I go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, okay? Um, I went to church uh, three times this week already. I actually, uh, three, uh, this past week, going away here, uh, one, two, yeah, one, two, three, four, four times this week, okay? All right, so um, always gather together with the church to worship. Um, if you feel an aptitude to teach and preach, okay? Um, do that, okay? Um, if you feel an aptitude to, to um, go out and visit the homeless, uh, uh, the sick, and, and the, the old, okay? The lonely, okay? Do that, all right? Uh, pray. Always pray. Get on your knees and pray. Read your Bible in Jesus' name, okay? Uh, Jesus is in the midst of the church, okay? Jesus is the head of the church, okay? He is there. He's going to take his church home in the rapture. All right, which is coming. Jesus continues to explain to Nicodemus on how can these things be, since Nicodemus asked the question. There were many things in Nicodemus' question here of how can these things be. So Jesus points out to Nicodemus that it is he who came down from heaven. It is he who is perfectly capable of revealing the will of God to us. It's Jesus, okay? For God said... This is my son in whom I am well pleased at the baptism of Jesus. <coughs> <coughs> now Jesus reveals this to Nicodemus. And Jesus says, How shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? So Jesus tells Nicodemus of these heavenly things. So Jesus breaks it down for Nicodemus and provides to Nicodemus the great discourse for his coming into the world and the happiness of them that believe in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so Paul stated in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. As a sinner, we are dead thrice, I mean, dead twice, sorry, dead twice. We are spiritually dead and we die physically one day. So as a sinner, we are dead twice, okay? We are spiritually dead and we die physically one day, okay? Humanity had no hope, okay? Until the Son of Man came down from heaven as the righteous judge to provide us a way out of our predicament, okay? So... The, the, the second physical death here, so if we're spiritually dead, that means we're rejected. We go to hell, okay? Pretty clear, all right? So with Jesus, he provides a way out of this predicament, okay? So Jesus tells Nicodemus this statement <clears throat> in verse 14 and verse 15. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him, should not perish, but have eternal life. When you come to know Jesus, okay, he rejuvenates your spirit, okay, all right? He brings your spirit out of the place of where it was, dead in trespasses and sins. It's what's called is the quickening of your spirit, okay? 
Your spirit is not alive, okay? And the love of God shines through you, okay? The Christian does a lot of odd things to the world today. The world doesn't understand Christians because we love to love, okay? And we love to give things, and we love to provide things. We love to share the Word of God, okay? Because we know of the predicament of the lost world, all right? Because you now have the love of God in you. <clears throat> so now, within the statement that Jesus made here about Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness, goes all the way back to Numbers chapter 21, uh, verses 6 and 9. 6, well, 6 through 9, okay? In these verses here, Moses makes... The, the, the nation of Israel had sinned, okay? And fiery ser serpents will sit into the camp. So Moses makes a brazen serpent and, and then hangs it on a pole, okay? And he sticks it up um, in the middle of the, the uh, where they were camped at, okay? That any Israelite who had been bitten by a fiery serpent could look at the brazen serpent on the pole and believe that God, that Yahweh would heal them, and they would be healed. They would not die. The bite of the fiery serpent meant death immediately. But looking at the brazen serpent on the pole and believing meant life. It meant life. The bite of sin is certain death, and it leads to death and hell and uh, a rejection of God, rejection from God, okay? God rejects you, okay? So the bite of sin is certain death, okay? And alienation from God, complete alienation from God. Jesus came to provide a way to escape the death that sin brought to humanity, okay? We can't save ourselves. We had to have Jesus Christ, okay? Sin must be punished. All people would be provided a way to escape through Jesus Christ, but today, so many reject. That's why wide is the way that leads to destruction. Because there's going to be millions, billions going the way to destruction. Okay? Billions who reject. They will die in hell. Okay? All right? <clears throat> so many reject. Nicodemus thought he was okay. But he was just as lost as the Gentile. Nicodemus thought that only Jesus... Only, I'm sorry, Nicodemus thought that only Jews would be saved. And the Gentiles were dead dogs, okay? So Nicodemus would say, how can these things be? So, so that was what's going on here. So he thought only the Jews, only the Jews. They had the law. They were the only ones that would be saved, okay? But they were living by the letter of the law. They were not living inwardly the law, okay? All right, Gentiles to them were dead dogs and would never know Yahweh, okay? And so Nicodemus says, well, how can even Gentiles be saved? How can these things be? <clears throat> so Jesus completely turns the world that Nicodemus knew upside down. He turns it completely upside down on him. Jesus does that to every sinner that comes before the cross. He turns our world upside down. That's why one day you can have a, a drunkard in a gutter throwing up on himself, lying in a gutter, okay? The next day, you can have a person that is seeking to change their life, okay? They're seeking, okay, Christ, okay? They've got, they've taken a bath, they've cleaned themselves up, okay? And they're, they're seeking after Christ now, all right? So, turns the world upside down. So, when you come to Jesus, everything you thought that you knew changes. It all changes, okay? You are born again. You are made new on the inside. Your spirit has been quickened. So Jesus tells Nicodemus that just like the serpent, the Son of Man must be lifted up, lifted up on a cross, so that whosoever believeth, not just the Jew, but also the Gentile, anyone that looks and believes can be saved. Okay? Jesus states in John chapter 12, verses 31-32. John 12, verses 31-32. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out, and I, he's, he's meaning, meaning the Son of Man, Jesus the Christ of God, if I, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to me, okay? Draw all men unto him. So the cross was God's judgment on the world. The price of sin must be paid for humanity. 
God's holiness and glory demands judgment, okay? So humanity had no hope. But in the Son of Man, Jesus, the Son of God, there is hope because the cross was Christ to bear, okay? Satan, the prince of the world, saw the cross as his triumph, but the cross would be his defeat, and Satan would be cast out. And out of the cross would flow the greatest good that would ever come into the world. The cross was the supreme exaltation of Jesus, where at his lifting up, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, Christ Jesus would draw all people to himself without regard to nationality, ethnicity, affiliation, or status in life. Okay? If you come to the cross and you believe, he promises to save you. Okay? Confess your sins at the foot of the cross. If you reject, it means eternal damnation and hell. Okay? All right? <clears throat> To Nicodemus, this was revolutionary. It turned his world upside down. To Nicodemus, he had to let go of what he knew or understood. He had to let go and believe on Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man. I am sure that Nicodemus must have thought, well, why would God do this? How would God do this? Why would God do this? Okay. In verse 16, Jesus tells him, I'm going to break this verse down a little bit. The first part of it, for God so loved the world. Wow, what a beautiful statement. God loved us even when we were his enemies. God saw that we had no hope. God knew that we could not even help ourselves. God knows our deplorable state. He knew it. Let's continue. For God so loved the world. God loved us first. This is the great truth that motivated God's plan of salvation. He loved us first, folks. This is so beautiful. Think about it. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. The son of God paid the price for our sins. Let's continue with John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Man, his only begotten son. Would you give your only child? Man, think about it. Would any father give his only child? Think about what, what God did here. He gave his only begotten son. He gave. God gave you, okay, his only son. In the book of Isaiah chapter 9, it states, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. God gave his only begotten son. In the book of John, verse 1-1, one, one, it states, In the beginning was the word. This word here is the son of God. It's Jesus, okay? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Oh, how wonderful. Verse 14 of, of uh, John chapter 3 and the word, no, verse 14 of, of John chapter 1 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth how beautiful, how beautiful so continuing with John 3.16 <clears throat> for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, whosoever believeth, that is you, that is me, that's anyone who believes in Jesus as the Son of God. Uh, in the book of Psalms, it states, kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. How dangerous it is to reject the Son of God. Believeth, so whosoever believeth in him, 
Jesus, the Christ of God, should not perish, okay? Our spirit will not perish in trespasses and sin, but we will have everlasting life by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. To believe in Jesus is more than in the intellectual agreement that Jesus is God. So even the devils say that Jesus is God, okay? Believing in Jesus means putting your trust and confidence in him, having faith in what he has said, okay? All right, this is the beauty of it, okay? In him and him alone, only he can save you. Only he has the power to save you. It is to put Christ in charge of our present plans and our eternal destiny. The day you die, knowing that the angels are going to come and get you. Okay? Believing is both trusting his words as true and reliable and relying on him for the power to change your life, your life, Christian. Trusting in Jesus will change you and you'll become who you're supposed to be through the will of God, okay? A drunkard or a sinner or someone who chases after pornography or someone who chases after the things of this world, okay, is not who you're supposed to be. It's not, okay? You are supposed to be in the will of God, following the will of God, okay? Loving your family, raising your children underneath the precepts of God, okay? That's who you're supposed to be, okay? I'm so thankful that you listened today. And I hope this lesson here helped you today. And it is such a beautiful time of year. This is Christmas Eve. Tomorrow is Christmas Day. Oh, so wonderful that it, Christmas Day would come at this time of year. So worship Jesus. Thank him for what he's done for us. He came to the earth to provide a way for us to escape the wrath which is to come, okay? Trust in him. Always look forward in the sky, folks. Look forward in the sky for his return because he's coming back. He's coming back to call his church home. Amen. Thank you for listening.